Really, the first thing that I like to, I like to do when I, when I go to the insurance house, I like to let them know that I'm there. Because a lot of times when the cable repair guy comes or you know, people come to do work in the yard, they might just start doing stuff to the house without letting the insured know that they're there. And I also want to ask- In this video, learn from me and Guy Grand from Veteran Adjusting School how to get set up on a hail claim and how to introduce yourself to the insured. It's starting right now. This is Adjuster TV. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Paysetter Claim Service. Download the work from home guide at adjustertv.com slash paysetter and by Adjuster Score. Show IA firms that you know your stuff. Prove yourself at adjusterscore.com. This training is part of a 16 video complete hail scoping series that you can find right now at adjustertvplus.com. All right, the first thing I do when, after I get out of the truck is I make sure that I have all my gear with me. I've got my tape measure, I have my snapshot camera, I've got a pen or a pencil, I've got chalk, and I've got pitch gauge and a shingle gauge and anything else I think I'm gonna need on this particular loss. And then always, I'm gonna grab a risk photo, which is the very first photo that's gonna be in your file. Right? And then I'm gonna grab my ladder and set it up on the house. It's extremely important to, as soon as you set your ladder up on the house, to always strap it off before you do anything else, um, especially if it's windy. Um, you don't want to be standing there talking to the homeowner and have the ladder slide and fall down while you, before you had a chance to get up on it. So I will always strap off my ladder first. And it wants to be tight enough to where it'll keep the ladder up and keep it stable, but you don't want necessarily want to crank it down too hard because you might break this um, and you're not relying on this as uh, something that you can land on. It's really just to keep it stable. And the next thing I do is take a photo of the address for address verification for the file. And then I'm going to introduce myself to the insured. Hey, hey, Mr. Insured, how's it going? It's going great today, how are you doing? <laughs> right. This is actually Guy Grand from Veteran Adjusting School. And- Hey, Matt. How's it going, man? It's going really great. Good, good. really good. glad to be a part and help you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So really the first thing that I like to, I like to do when I, when I go to the insurance house, I like to let them know that I'm there. Because a lot of times when the cable repair guy comes or you know, people come to do work in the yard, they might just start doing stuff to the house without letting the insured know that they're there. And I also wanna ask a few questions when I first arrive at the house. And basically, I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm Matt with your insurance company. Hi, Matt. And we talked on the phone a yes. couple of days ago. Yeah, we did. And um, just wanna let you know that I'm here to take a look at the house. And, and, and during our, our phone conversation, you had mentioned that you were concerned about the roof and that maybe you'd noticed some damage to the sides of the house or to the other parts of the house. So we're gonna kind of confirm what we talked about in our phone conversation. Um, some of the questions I asked in my original phone conversation were, did you see any damage to the inside of the house or any water spots in the ceiling? Right. And he may have said, no, we didn't really notice anything, but between that phone call and now, Maybe you started peeking around a little bit more, looked in a closet or in the garage or something and may have found a water spot. So I'm gonna always double check that because if there's interior damage, we absolutely wanna take care of it. Um, the second thing I'll ask is, 
as if there was any personal property that was damaged, any, any patio furniture, grill covers, dog dishes, things like that out in the yard. And then we'll verify the mortgage. And then I always ask how the roof is. I, and I, generally speaking, I usually ask these questions in the phone call, but I'm gonna ask them again. Just, to, just, just for confirmation. Just for confirmation, right? yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. Any thoughts about that or any, any suggestions or ideas? Um, yeah, no. The, the, the important thing for most insureds is to know that you're there. Yeah. That's the number one. Right. Hi, I'm here. I'm going to take care. And, and what my process is. Yeah. Right? Because the more you talk about what your pro this is what I'm going to do, now the insured can go, oh, okay, you're. I can close the door and go make a cup of coffee because I know you're going up on the roof. Yeah. So, and then basically what I'll say at that point is I'll say, okay, well, if you, unless you have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the house. I'm going to look at the roof. I'm going to look at the gutters and the windows and all sides of that. So people will ask, they'll be like, well, are you going to look at this, the, the downspouts? Are you going to look at the fence? Are you going to look at, so I will list off all the things I'm going to look at. Um, and then I will say, you're welcome to come along with me and tag along if you want to. Uh, might be kind of boring, you know, I might try to make a little joke out of it or whatever. They're welcome to, absolutely. Most people aren't going to climb up on the roof. Occasionally somebody does. They're like, oh, I want to come up and see. I want to see what you're looking at. Um, but then I'll just say, it'll probably take me 30 minutes, 45 minutes um, to take a look at everything. And then I'll come back and, and knock on the door and kind of, we'll kind of go from there. So unless you have any other questions, I'll go ahead and take a look at this and then I'll come find you later. That's yep. basically what I say. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. At this point, I, I try to I try to keep the insureds away from me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the contractors. Uh, yeah, here, contractor, you and the insured could go have coffee. Yeah, while I do my work. Yeah, and I do. I, I I've done that because it keeps me focused on what my process is sure. and what I need to do. Yeah. And how do I stay organized? Because if I walk out here and the insured says, "Well, look at this screen over there," yeah. and I turn left, I just broke my entire train of con. That's concentration right. and so now I got to get back to where was I yeah so yeah. Um, and, and but a lot of insurance do want to travel with you and so you just they do follow follow me yep, <laughs> right. yeah most of the time they don't but I always like to give people that option because it is their sure. house after all sure. um, so all right from this point we're gonna go ahead and scope this loss for more training videos just like this become an adjuster TV plus member right now at adjuster TV plus dot com. I'm Matt, good to see you again. I'm Hernando Gallegos, the COO of CCMS and Associates. We specialize in property casualty, liability, uh, and commercial. Uh, we have clients coast to coast. Hi, my name is Preston Reynolds. I'm the CAT Director at Housing Company. Uh, Housing Company is a full service adjustment firm in the U.S. Uh, we have a daily footprint in uh, the Midwest and CAT services nationwide. Well, NACA gives a platform for the independent adjuster that's not usually there. Uh, adjuster TV is enormous for these guys because they don't have a mentor that they can just pick up the phone and call, but they can, they can go on Facebook, they can go online and see the stories and understand the knowledge that you're, that you're imparting. Um, so I think NACA gives everyone a platform that they can learn and also camaraderie. They can ask questions, find a mentor, and uh, learn something new. So we attend NACA uh, primarily to look for great talent. Um, Look for people that are like-minded ind individuals uh, that love the industry. You know, we like to, to meet with the people and realize that they have the same values as us. So, and it's a good place to come to get that. The importance of networking is that well, that's how you that's how you find individuals of the same thought process. And here, networking would be for an independent adjuster, especially a new adjuster, is finding someone to mentor them. They need to talk to people and find out who's good at roofing, who's good at water, who's good at commercial claims. People are here, I, I feel like, to, to interview and, and, and better themselves and find good firms to work for. But I think there's a lot of other things that you can do, you know, just meeting everybody and learning about the industry and all the great things some of these companies are doing.